Retro Tech Ralph here. I've got another PlayStation 3 Slim in the garage. Now this is a this is a, a couple of friends of ours called Haley and Mark. They've asked me to see if they can get this working. Now they say that it's it powers up, it works as a game system, but there's a problem with the DVD Blu-ray Blu drive. Apparently, the sun likes to post things. So we don't know if there's two discs in here stuck. We don't know whether or not there's anything in particular, but I'm gonna give this a good service anyway. So the first job I need to do is get this powered up, which should be somewhere around here. See if I can, if even it is a problem with there being two discs stuck in here, which I don't know whether or not they would be, or whether or not it's something deeper than that. But we'll get on to start to strip and set up, well set up, then we'll strip down and see what I can actually fettle about with on this and see what I can do. It might be a very easy fix, it might be just releasing the disc from the drive and that will really do it. If not, then it might be a belt that's gone, it could be the drive motor that's burned out. It could be all sorts of little things that could be wrong with it. But I need to test, make sure everything works on this to start with before we start stripping into it. Because if it gets mended straight away, then boom, there you go. That's, that's fine. But I'll do the easy options first. I'm actually looking on the side of here, there is a, there's a lip on there, so I think there might have been a case of it's been dropped or might not have been put back together right, but traceable item, I don't know if that's theirs or not, but it looks like it might have already avoided the warranty, because that's not exactly stuck on properly, but it's a PS3, it's well past its warranty time anyway, so let's see if we can get this fixed. Wide in. TV cable, power cable, I've got a USB onto the controller because one, it won't be paired and two, that's probably flat as a, yeah, flat as a flat thing to be honest. So we'll press the button and start up. We have got the red light on, which is good. So it looks like it probably will work, but let's switch it on and see what, what happens. Either the noise on the television, if you know the PlayStations, you'll know the, the sounds, what they make anyway, and what, what the pitch is gonna be. So I'm not gonna bother moving the camera or something. Ooh, that's not a nice noise. Okay, so PlayStation booting up. Got on the screen there. Seizures, this is trying to pair up. That's charging. Press the PS, got number one. Okay, so it does work. I'm clicking away. Any games on here? Um, SingStar, PS Vita. Okay, so there's nothing major or whatever I need to worry about. I've got videos on here for some reason. Don't know what videos they are. I don't want to pry into somebody else's private stuff anyway. So let's. Right, so the, the disk drive was making a funny noise. Let's go for the dumb thing, shall we? Let's press eject. Oh, okay. So the eject button works. A few scratches on the disc there, but looks like how to train your dragon, probably three. So, I don't know if it's a game, it looks like a DVD. Yeah, DVD. That sounds normal-ish. Let's get a PS3 game in this. Now, I've got my wallet full with bits and bats. Let's go to Gran Turismo. See what happens with this in it. Yeah, that's not loading right. The PlayStation's not recognizing there's a disc in. Yeah, it's not noticed at all, so. Guess it back out again. Mine's already got little bits of dirt on anyway. Mine just work in my my PS3 system. Okay, so technically it's working. So let's get on with and we've got the disc out. I don't know if there's something else in there. Apparently he likes like I say he likes to post things. 
her son. So we'll we'll see what happens. We'll we'll take it to pieces, have a look inside the DVD drawer itself, and then yeah, let's see if we can get this one fully serviced and fixed. Okay, we're all ready. We need a T. Oh, it doesn't even say what it is. Need T sixty eight security bit for the. There's four screws on the front there need to come out. There's one under here, 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 and here. You need to take that one out. You need to what that invalidate your warranty if this was new. But since it isn't, it's not really a problem. That four is stuck in. There's nothing in that corner. It's already been held in them corners anyway. So why don't I get on with this? Do it fast forward so you can have a bit of a laugh at, laugh at me talking to myself and squeaking as we do it at four times speed. And let's get this thing open. As I thought, the obviously the sticker has been stuck on here with the, you know, the void warranty sticker. There's no just say it on there at all, which is a bit weird. Usually after it was just stuck on there and saying void and then void, but so I think something's already been in this. Right, I unscrewed that one there because that removes the hard drive, if I remember. There should be a way to take this one out. It's not that. Oh, that there it is. Take that out. It's got to be took out because all the fluff, some fluff in there as well, anyway. So pull that down, slide out your hard drive. Put that to one side away from my magnets. Right, flip over. From the back, bring it forward. And off she comes. Ooh, lovely. So you think you're cleaning your house, but you're not. These things suck in from anywhere. Right, we know the power supply is working fine. The fans going around with that needs a damn good clean. It's this that's the problem. Now if I remember how to take this out and get some space, then I'll be miles away. So, power supply out. To connect or a thing, we'll just take that out anyway. Yeah, and we need to strip this down properly. This is just filthy. Get how the drive goes in. Or oh, could I just go around it without? Okay, two screws there and there need to come off. I think. Remember rightly. Might not be as well. Ah, I can see the um, Sony arrows. Little arrow there, and there. Gets the power supply out. Should get the power supply out. Should be connected onto the board. That side. That's the power supply doing. We'll need a damn good clean. And what we've got is blower anyway. Okay. Cable goes underneath there for there. We can take the fan off because that will need a damn good clean. Just be careful with the cables. They need to be. Just thread that out of there. It'll come off eventually. Two cables. Oh, it's one cable out. Two, three, yeah. So I need to unscrew which part here for there, or is it the. Yeah, two connectors, three connectors there, which is good for this. One screw holding that in there. Okay. I don't think I need to take that off. I'm missing something, I know I am. The aerial, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth aerials on the front of here, they will need eventually to come off, but at present, I can leave them as they are. Okay. 
Let's have a look. Can I remove that? Yes. So we'll get rid of the controller on the front. I think might be lucky. I need an extension on that. Let me get out of stripping this without you watching and we can get these two parts out and I'll tell you how they come out. Right, removal of this, one screw at the back, there's three ribbon cables there but once you pull out there's another ribbon cable there which is going to be an absolute nightmare to reattach back in. So there is this problem in a nutshell. Removing, that can all the pile of bits removed. Um, Come on, Ralph, remember how to do this. Pop that onto there. That doesn't just prise off. I'm going to leave things on for the time. I might be able to get away with not doing anything unless this is connected through into itself. Yeah, I don't want to force too much. It looks like that part there, maybe the bottom end of a screw, we're connecting to there. So I think the whole lot needs to come out fully for us to get anywhere with this. Yeah, another bit there comes out. Right. So removal continues. Right. Caddy there for it. I need to clean this up a, bit, a little bit as it is. So I'm going to get the, the blower on this, get it outside and, and clean most of the dust and crap off the, all this lot. I'll have a nice, clean PlayStation. Now, I'm actually with. jumping forward a little bit. Um, remove the ribbon cable from here, put it back onto the control panel so this don't forget what it is. The Bluetooth and the wireless, these have been unscrewed from the front here. Simple Phillips screw, screw on the front of there. Take these off, unravel from where it's wound behind, around here, 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 up to there, and then gently, I'm gonna get a pair of tweezers, Pull them off of the board. Just nice and gentle, not to drag it or anything. So we've got the smallest little connectors on the end. If you damage these, then you've um, yeah, you get, get a small problem. So there's a good these go in the pile for cleaned parts. As you can notice, these are cleaned. Right. To get the board out, screw there, there. These are little arrows on on your persona. Keep putting on, which is there. The shine on it, but it tells you whereabouts to go to. So I think there's one there, one there, one here, one somewhere else, two over here with the top of the caddy. And then you're gonna try and prise it out from the back because these will be coming through the holes already cut out. And I think there's something I'm missing here. Oh no, there we go. I'll just come off. Still more dirt I've missed there anyway, but these things suck in air anyway. So the base is on the pile to clean. Right, I have to take off. Uh, I need some more cleaning to do. I need to take the fan off. I can't for the life remember how it comes off. They must come off when we're doing this part. I'll re, um, yeah, thermal paste this, I think. I'm taking that off there and there. I don't think it's going to do anything. Unless it just gives me access to the fan. Let's have a look. Oh, just takes the fan completely out, which is good. Leaves that section in there. Now those parts connect the cases together. So these parts will connect, will be like a, it's like a spring, the metal is like a V-shape, a little bit of a spring to it, which hold behind one of them is a CPU, one's a GPU. It's not the end of the world to do that, to take that off, but I want to take the metal casing off. So you've got one, go around one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you've got five screws on the back there. These four will come out and that should up like take everything off. I don't see any of these holding in the casing for the heat sink. Ah, there we go. Black, two black there, there. We'll take this part off and nothing else.
Okay. Maybe these are connected through as well. And they're bolted into the looks about right. Look bolted straight into this heat sink anyway. So more parts to clean. More parts to take off. Loads of screws. And I know I'm going to forget where what goes where. That's why it's best doing this in one go and then you don't forget. Maybe not come back tomorrow and finish this off. Now, I think most screws are, are took out. Two down here are the same as what came with the fan. So all the fan black ones are staying together. The screws over here do one, two, three, the five around there. So I'm trying to keep everything on little magnets that I've been keeping from other projects and stuff with everything on them. So those two screws straight through. Like I said, there is a little bit of a of a bend to it. So when it's pushed down, it makes sure that the heat sink is trapped and spreads your thermal paste better. Now have we got anything else on here? No. Right, so that's out. Bottom part of the heat sink. Power to clean. Hoping now the board should come out. Am I missing something else? I'm definitely missing something, aren't I? I know I am. Come on. Ralph, 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 what are you missing? This must come off front first then. Ah, it was the thermal paste holding everything on. Okay. So that's quite, I mean, it's quite, it's a little bit of stick to it, but I'm gonna get that cleaned off. I don't think we need to take the heat sink off or do we? This stuck on as well. Oh, there's one screw, there it is. So yeah, we'll get everything cleaned. That's like the same as those. Yeah, that should. Now, unless I've found something else with the one there. So it's two underneath again. There we go. That's come out. So another six screws there for that, all black. And there goes your heat sink from your fan, from the casing, leaving the motherboard. Lovely. So more cleaning. A little bit of blowing. There's not much on this for clean, cleaning wise. It's not like an old spectrum where everything's covered in grease and gunk and whatever. It's just standard dust. So, what we will do now, I don't think I'm missing anything, no pads or anything are on here at all, is give things a, a better clean, good blowout with this, and a clean off of all the thermal pasting and repaste with some Arctic gold. Arctic gold, Arctic silver, yes. So give me a few minutes, we'll get to that stage, so at least we're fully disassembled, then we can start putting them back together again, see if she works, and take the, yeah, the CD drive, DVD drive apart as well. So one step at a time, we'll fully service this, back together, and then we'll get on with what it's here there for. There we go, everything's clean and done, and f I'm happy enough with them. <sighs> of course, the only problem now is, what went where? <laughs> Right, just got to make sure, yeah and yeah. Now this is the problem with most of this stuff, is just remembering what goes where and how. Okay. So I don't need that yet. I will need to put some thermal paste on there before this gets bolted onto, but other than that, it's, it's going together quite easily. Screws are everywhere. I don't know which screws are for what, but when we go back together again, we will be fine. It'll all just, it'll all come to me. I'm sure it will. So, yeah. Ah, cages, right. Heat sink cages. Or a shielding. That's what I need. First. Okay, it's all starting to come back to me now. Right. I've got the case, screw, case screws here. I thought they went on first. We went to, with the heat sink, with the RF shielding, but you need to put the fan part back on first, screw, 
screw, screw, screw. So that's in place. Second step on this now will be thermal pasting the chips, put it on top of here, put in the next level of the RF shielding. Well, well, it's just, I mean, it can't be RF shielding but nowadays, can it? Last two of the black screws go for putting the fan back on there, which we'll do later. Don't want to do it just yet. So, next step will be motherboard. Which only goes in one way. But you have to put it through so the connectors go in there first. And then down she goes. And squidges all the thermal paste on. Then the extra part on top, the extra shielding. Over here, yeah, yeah, that way, and screw all together. So, at the minute, we just need to thermal paste the main chips and put that on. So, quickly jump again, and we'll see if I've cocked up or not. Yay! Oh, now that looks a lot better. Heat sinks on, well, our shielding's on, metal's on, screwed in place. Four screws on this go through before you put the board on. Board then pushes in, thermal paste underneath, five screws on here for five, and then you put the tension plates on to hold the board through the heat sink to the chip. Done, sorted. Now there's a billion and one different people out there who will do this, and there's a billion and one different amounts of thermal paste you'll put on. I always use Arctic Silver, the um the MX4, I think, is absolutely brilliant. I've not had a problem with this yet. People will say, you don't need it for this, you don't need it for that, that I don't care. This is what I use, I've got a big tube of it, I'm using it, and it's fine. There's also a billion and one people who will say, you need a pea, you need a grain of rice size, you need to spread it out. I'm not showing you what I just did, because I know I'll get comments of, yeah, yeah, it must do it like that. Just do it as you think you should do best. Experience always tells me that too much is a pain in the arse. Not enough this might be enough, but no. It's good enough for what I've just done. I can't see anything dribbling out of this, so we're perfectly fine. Now, on with full construction again. I know I've forgotten something there. That goes in, I need power supply on, I need the cables going across here now for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Fan in. More screws holding this to the chassis, is there not? Yeah, watch out for that piece of metal on the front. It goes in one way only. And it's a pain in the bum to figure out which way it is. Yeah, because that goes on, 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 on. Oh! That way, there we go. <laughs> the pain in the bum when it comes off. So, we'll get on with this. Put screws in that I think I need to. Oh, I need back in first. I always put the back in first before you put the front in because you've got the ports to go through the holes. Yeah, that's better. And let's get some more pieces on this, put back together again. Right then, everything's back in place. I've actually not got any screws spare. I've got two up here, there's a black one here which goes at the back of the CD drive. Two silver ones that go somewhere unforgettable. Oh, it was the power supply in. That's fine. So that is all I need so far. Cable there is ready to go with the power supply. There's a cable that's go from there to this side of the power supply. Pins go in there for more direct to the board connections. The cables for here for the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. I'm not entirely sure if that's the right way around or not. Front panel's back on as well. Wired into there. So as far as I'm bothered at the minute, I can't do any more on this. This is ready, this is done, this is in place, and I'm more than happy with it. I've got loads of screws and bits for the case. So those silver ones, the black ones on here, go on the front panel. They have to wait until I've done... Yeah, everything inside. I have to put the CD, DVD, Blu-ray, shall I say, Blu-ray player in first before the power supply, because that covers over these ribbon cables here, which this is going to be a nightmare to put in. I've done it before, but it'll be a nightmare to put in, but that's the reason why that is, this is here. 
So we have to go straight to this, the Blu-ray drive. That's upside down at the minute. Now, that doesn't sound good to me. So to get into this, I think I have to undo two, none, one. I think one screw there. It's a very flat screw as well, isn't it? Let's take out that screwdriver. Put it on my magnet so I don't lose it. Anything else? Plastic can stay. Ah, there's two more here. Okay. Oh, off you come. Ah, I don't want that to happen. So it's just three screws holding the the case on. Two long, one short. That's I'm very much mistaken. Nothing else seems to be there. Let's get that to one side over here. Right. I'm hoping that when this comes off, there'll be something in here which is making the CD not go around. And that part's okay. Why is that side not lifting? It's not a clip. Maybe this side here is holding itself in place. There we go. Just a little bit of teasing out. Everything seems to look like it's going right. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Right, I'll not show you that, because that's, um... Yeah. That's Mark's full name, but he's got his Costco card in here. <laughs> and a chip. For, it's like a game or something. That, hold on. I think there's more in here, rattling. It's another one. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks like we're after Costco in a minute. I'm hoping that's all that's wrong with it. I can't see anything else in here. Oh, it, it's 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 kids. You, you've got to. Yeah, I ain't got any kids myself, but you've got to love them sometimes. <laughs> right. I'm gonna see if I can clean. This drive out, I can't stop laughing, that's just ridiculous. That's like there's a screw holding, clip holding there, there's a couple of screws holding on the front. <laughs> this is just. That's fine, that's supposed to come off, that goes in there. <laughs> Let me get this a service and see if we can get back and get this working perfectly. <laughs> right, we're into the um, Blu ray. Also, I'm not sure if I've just told you this, but the screw there, screw there, there's just two. The one on the top, yes, that connects into there. So you go one, two, three. So that takes the shield off. On here, there's one screw down here. And you see, one down, down here, which are these really short, but well, really long but small ones. One corner, one corner. So that's fine. And then it's actually spring clipped into these parts here. So you can easily bend them out, or push them back in again, and then it releases on there. And this whole top case comes off. It's only for the loading mechanism when the CD goes in, it, whatever, it holds it in place, and then that centre spinny bit fits in there. There's the magnet which holds things in place. So that is fine at the moment. We're down to the laser. I'm not going to go any deeper than this, because I think we either might have a big problem with this, or it's perfectly fine. There's some scratching. Oh, is it scratching? Let me get a... There's a Q-tip, but I'm more American. Cotton bud. Nothing against the Americans, but it's called a cotton bud because it's got cotton on it and it's a bud. It's your buddy. Uh, there's some fluff on there. Uh, it's going to collect these things anyway. Thingy bunnies. So I'll just try and clean up a little bit. There's no guarantee this will work. I might put some extra grease on there to lube up for that, for the actual carriage. It looks like we've got, we've probably got away with this. The lens looks like it's perfectly fine. Now let me get you in to see if you can tell. And let me put it on the side so we can, that doesn't look bad at all. 
So I think we might have got away with it. <laughs> There's nothing else I can do. It's free. It look, feels like it's perfectly moving. Doesn't it seem like it's being clogged up with anything, scratched, damaged or whatever. So I think we might be in luck. I'm going to give that a clean with another cotton bud because I've just um, covered this in grease. Oil things up, clean the laser, get this back together again and we should hopefully have a fully working PlayStation 3 Slim drive. Yeah. All right, a minute later. Greased the bars, greased the spiral, oh, what do I call it now, for the, for the motor. This runs absolutely smooth as anything, lovely action. So what I need to do now is a clean cotton bud, Q-tip, whatever, very gently. Just to clean any sort of, if there is, I can't see if there's anything on here anyway. Let that dry it's on itself. I'm going to do some on here as well because the rubber does get quite dirty with bits and bats. So, yeah. That's possibly the rubber anyway, just coming off in my hand and on the, yeah, on the cotton bud. But it's good practice to keep things clean with this. That's fine. Now, happy. I don't need to do anything else with that. So now, reverse. Reverse assembly, not zoom in, zoom out, without that fall on the floor. This isn't too bad for oil. I don't think I need to do anything with this. So it's a case of put the right way around. Cogs one there, it clips into these two parts here, which is that. Two screws back in the corners. That on before I do the lid, since I dropped it on the floor, I'm gonna have to go and find it now. Yeah, but yeah, then this will be going back in, which is a pain in the bum with all the ribbon cables, but we'll get round that somehow. Right, back together again. Oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> well, I'm fully back together then. Right, two screws, like I said before, two screws and one on the top, hold everything in. That doesn't rattle as much as what it used to do. <laughs> oh, kids, eh? Right, my problem now is I must put this ribbon cable down here. These aren't a problem because they will be out of the way because that screw goes in there and they can be pushed in easy enough it's the one underneath that I am not going to bore you with because this could either take five seconds or five hours to do there's enough cable to pull out enough to get it in there but it's one of those sockets where the black outer part comes up and then you put the things in and you press it down and it locks into place <sighs> this might take a while once it's in I'll screw it in place We'll fit the power supply and then we can start testing, hopefully. And that should be the end of this little project. Right, the ribbon cables are in at the bottom, through at the back. I haven't put the screw in at the back yet, but I had to remove the front panel because I thought it would be fine, but it actually goes on. Oh, no, it doesn't. What does it? Is it on before or after? I think it was on before. Well, either, either way, if it's on there, like so, That goes and doesn't hold in place at all, so I think it's got to go on first then. Oh, bum. Right. So I was right, but I wasn't. Oh, look at me nightmare again. I can't see properly. One Damn second. it, I was right a second time. This does go on afterwards. Because once you put this and click it in place, these white parts... Help me in, zoom in. Oh, the white clips right here, when they're underneath the CD player, jump, make the CD player, DVD player, should we say, higher up. So they have to go on afterwards. So, yeah, and yeah, so it's after and clips into place. Oh, now I'm going to do is find a screw. If I was a screw that went in there, I'll be this black one over here. So, that's the Claro there from Sony. Let me magnets off. don't want to do it too much because I break the plastics. 
nobody wants to break things that you can't really replace. Right, so, does that go that way or that way? Ah, we've forgotten something. On cable. Right, so, that's got a four there, that's got there. This slots in to place, pushes in onto the board there. That screw screw there, there's these two. Yeah, it's in all right. I don't know. Magnet's back on again then. It's funny, sometimes you get an electric screwdriver and you think it's magnetic. And a lot of times it really isn't. I have a torque setting on this as it is. I should have put it onto about one or two maybe. I'd have been fine for it. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Cable in that way. Nope, that way. Nope, that way. Yeah. There's my tweezers again, because it's a little bit fiddly. One in. Another on. So that gives you most of the power. Have to go underneath there. Keep things neat. I think. Well, if it doesn't, it's going. This is really essential. So that's from the main power supply as well. So you've got two there. There's no earth on this. Job sorted. Done. Now this went from the front back, I think. Ah, thought I got a problem there. Done. So all I need to do now is reassemble all the screws in the back in fast forward, because it's funny. And then we can start testing this. That's it, all done. All I need to do now is remove the void warranty sticker. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a clean, especially on the feet. These things are gonna get dirty as soon as you put it back into where they, they come from, whether the whether that's a TV cabinet or side of your bed or something, I don't know where, where most people put their PlayStations. Bolted to the wall. That one never came off. So yeah, we'll give this a good, bit of a good clean. The isopropanol is pretty good anyway, because it just lifts any stickiness up and you just rub it straight off. See that on there, just coming sh straight off now. I've already put the hard drive in. I might have missed that one, I don't know. Yeah, it's nearly coming off. A bit more on there, I think. Maybe a brush. Now, I actually swapped, because that is the one that went here. They're exactly the same, it doesn't matter at all. So I'll give this a good clean inside and out. We'll plug this in and see if see if it works. Hopefully, it, there's no reason why this shouldn't be working. So we get a better cloth on this, better clean all around it, plug it in and go. There we go, back together, better clean. I get a bit more actually to be honest in a bit, but is plugged in, the HDMI and the power leads are on the back. It's nice having an HDMI TV. Right, let's turn this thing on and see if it doesn't blow up. Right, I've got a red light on here, which is good. I'm gonna turn the telly over. HDMI one. Hopefully, this shouldn't make any noise. This shouldn't, this should boot straight up. And then put a game in and see if it works. Good sign, beep. Obviously it sounds a hell of a lot quieter. Controls flashing. PlayStation is booting up. That's turned on. Everything looks good so far. So 
I've got everything there, everything's on the hard drive that they had before. Let's have a quick look what it is. Oh, okay. The titles that they bought Turbo. Oh, no, I don't want to play it. Like, yep. It knows it's Despicable Me 2. I like that film. Frozen. Avengers Age of Ultron. So, they're obviously, the, the digital copies of things anyway. So, what we're here for now is to check whether or not this works. So, in she goes. Sounds like he's reading it. Oh, and Trisbo. The screen's gone black. Hopefully, this is loading it. Two thousand ten Sony Entertainment Limited. Sony Entertainment presents Poly Phony Access Game Data. Okay, yes. Now oh, that sounded familiar, didn't it? Oh, it's installing. Should we come back in a second when it's, when it's finished installing this thing? Yeah. She is working. Welcome to the world of Gran Turismo. Still the bottom corner is then installing. So that's how well you can see. Can you see any more? So she's on. Let me get over this side, we can see properly. Arcade mode, let's go for arcade mode. It does take its time to, to um, load this thing, but hey-ho. Perhaps we should put it on mute in case you had a copyright strike on that one, yes. Don't know what music it was. They had oh, the first one. Was it or the second one? Manic Street Preachers was the um, was the music. Yeah, definitely a copyright strike on that. Yeah, that's fine. Come on, Gran Turismo, load in. Like I said, there should not be a reason why this just doesn't work now. Now we've actually removed the poker chips and the Costco card. Get dirty in there quite easily, don't you? You can see what I'm doing. The PS3 bit on there. I actually put some a metal badge that you could fit inside there, but it kind of broke straight off. Or oh, broke, should I say, not broke. Broke completely off. It just didn't work at all. So if you're thinking of buying a stick of something that goes on the, you can see the reflection, the PS3 that's indented, don't bother. You're probably best just getting some paint and pouring it in there. Being a bit gentle if you can. It's still loading to be honest, so this is what's worrying me a little. There's no noise, no nothing, so it seems to be alright. Quick cut I think, see if she works in a bit. Okay, you might have noticed I've swapped discs. I think my Gran Turismo disc might be damaged but it's, I've got GTA 4 in here, and that seems to be installing. I forgot how long it takes to actually install the game on the PS, PS3 anyway, so I'm thinking either there's a small problem with maybe the hard drive, the disk drive might not be reading perfectly correctly, but it does seem to be doing quite well. So it's installed, and I can hear, if you listen carefully, if I turn the uh, volume off on here, The disc is, the head is moving up and down to try and find exactly where, what and how. So it is doing what it's supposed to. It doesn't seem to be as quick as what it should be. And it's, it must, all I can think it must be me. I, I'm thinking it's kind of instant game. And it wasn't, it was always this slow until it's been fully installed on the system. And then it's, it works as is. But it's showing the bottom corner now, showing starting new game, which is down here. Cousins Bellic. So I it is working as it should do, to be honest. 
So I think we're fine. We should come up with the part of the movie now. Here it comes. Right. Okay, so we've been whipped. So here comes the, the game. We can fast forward by pressing X and get straight to the game. But yeah, I think she's actually working. I need to do a couple more tests in private with this. But she seems to be working okay. Not absolutely perfect. I don't know what, why, but it does seem to be as good as what I think we need to be without buying any new parts. Yeah, you could buy a new Blu-ray laser and try and fit that in there, but I don't think it's exactly needed. For what I think the what I think um, Haley and Mark are going to be doing with this, I think it's perfectly fine. They wanted a DVD, well, a Blu-ray player back as it was, but since we've already got a, a DVD, a couple of coins, and a Costco card stuck in there, then um, yeah, nice one, Noah. It was their um, their son. So uh, yeah, nice one. That's given me a, a job to do, and um, give me a very good laugh for a Sunday morning. So. Yeah, I think we'll fix on this. We'll give this one a bit of a coat of boot polish on the top as well, because it wasn't doing looking too good, to be honest. But that's actually going quite well. There's a couple of scratches across here. There's a dint on there, but that's actually really going quite well with a bit of boot polish on. Light boot polish, polish it in, cover your layers, and it kind of does come out quite well. A little bit on the front here. But it just needs a damn good polish up. Yeah. The problem is we these as well with the buttons. When every time you press in, you leave a little bit of grease behind. So it's kind of underneath where everything is. But that's fine. For what they're using it for, I think it's done. I think we're happy with this. So um yeah. Thanks for giving me the PS3 for, for you to fix for you. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. If you if you want something doing yourself, um, anybody out there, then please get in touch. Send me some stuff down I can fix, or if you want to donate it to the channel, and I can get it fixed, put it on the shelves up here, and have a bit of a play and a bit of a laugh with it. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.